Well, here we are again with another video about another vegetable. This time it's broccoli, so we'll be looking at the benefits and side effects of this big green thing that many people don't like to eat. As I did in my previous video, I'm going to be looking through several articles and extracting the main points from each of them. Okay, first up it's Live Science with an article called Broccoli, Health Benefits, Risks and Nutrition Facts. So let's take a look at the benefits. First up, it's diabetes and autism. I was wondering why these two were put together, but apparently it's due to a compound called sulforaphane, which is beneficial for both conditions. Next on their list is cancer prevention, which is due to broccoli's ability to reduce oxidative stress. Second on their list is cholesterol reduction, which is due to the soluble fibre binding to cholesterol in the blood. Then there is detoxification, which due to several phytochemicals helps the body eliminate contaminants. Heart health is another benefit due to various factors such as reducing cholesterol, preventing damage to blood vessels and regulating homocysteine. Broccoli is also good for eye health due to lutein and zeaxanthin. They also list digestion as a benefit of broccoli, but I personally question this because I've often found that broccoli gives me a lot of flatulence. Broccoli can apparently be good for inflammation due to omega-3 fatty acids plus several chemicals I can't pronounce. But what about the side effects of broccoli? Well, they do mention that it can make you gassy. They also say that people on blood thinning medications such as warfarin should be careful because the vitamin K in it can interfere with it. Finally, it's not good for people with hypothyroidism. But the question I always ask is, does this website cite its sources? Well, it lists two sources, mindbodygreen.com and Wincomson Department of Public Instruction. OK, let's look at another website. Healthline has an article called Top 14 Health Benefits of Broccoli. Number one is that it's so nutritious. It contains vitamin C, A, K, folate, potassium, phosphorus and selenium. The other 13 health benefits are it contains potent antioxidants that offer health protective effects. Bioactive compounds may contribute to reduced inflammation, may protect against certain types of cancer, antioxidants and fibre may aid blood sugar control, may support heart health in a variety of ways, promotes healthy digestion and reduced constipation, May slow mental decline and support healthy brain function. May help slow the ageing process. Vitamin C content supports a healthy immune system. May support dental and oral health. May promote healthy bones and joints. Nutrient content may support a healthy pregnancy. And finally, may protect your skin from sun damage. In terms of references, there are many links to articles on PubMed. OK, on to the next website. Librate has an article called Benefits of Broccoli and its Side Effects. The benefits are... It helps fight cancer, keeps your bones healthy and strong, helps you look young, good for your hair, helps to detoxify your body, helps reduce cholesterol, helps to reduce reaction to allergies and inflammation, helps to cure stomach disorders, reduces risk of heart diseases, helps increase immunity, and helps in pregnancy. As for the side effects, they mention the issue with people on blood thinners due to the vitamin K in it, they also say that some people can develop an allergic rash. There is a problem with this article though, it doesn't have any references. Anyway, let's take a look at another website. Medical News Today has an article called The Many Health Benefits of Broccoli. These benefits are fighting cancer, again, improving bone health, again, 
looking younger again and improved digestion and natural detoxification. As before, I question that it improves digestion because for me it upsets digestion. It also says protection from chronic disease. They've lumped several things in together here, saying that the high fibre content prevents certain common diseases. As for risks, let's have a look. They mention the issue with blood thinners again. As for references, they have seven links, some of which are on PubMed. OK, let's look at the next website. Going for a negative article this time, Good Health All has an article called Six Major Side Effects of Eating Too Many Broccolis. OK, let's ignore the dodgy grammar there and take a look. Side effect one is too many antioxidants are bad for our health. But don't be scared by this too much because it's referring to a study which found that smokers who took high doses of beta carotene are more likely to develop lung cancer. Now, first of all, one cup of broccoli only contains 11% of the RDA of beta carotene. Secondly, if you're not a smoker, this is not even a concern. The other reason they say that the antioxidants in broccoli could be a problem is that having over 150 units of vitamin E can increase the risk of stroke. But the thing is, broccoli doesn't contain anywhere near that amount of vitamin E. The second side effect they mention is too much dietary fibre is bad for our stomach. I think they mean gut, not stomach. But anyway, it's more the type of fibre rather than the amount that's a problem with broccoli. The third side effect is might be allergic to some individuals. Isn't that sentence the wrong way round? Shouldn't it say some individuals might be allergic to it? Anyway, surely you could say this about any food. Anyone could be allergic to anything. And they only explain this by saying, if you are allergic to broccoli, then you should avoid consuming broccoli at all cost, as otherwise it may cause allergic reactions. OK, well, thanks for that piece of wisdom there. Side effect four is that it may increase the risk of hypoglycemia. But I'm not really sure about the explanation given here. I'm pretty sure people don't need to worry about broccoli making their blood sugar too low. I mean, hardly anyone is just going to eat loads of broccoli on its own anyway. Side effect five is that it may cause hypertension. Apparently this is because the potassium in it can lower blood pressure, which means that it's good for people with high blood pressure, but not so good for those at risk of low blood pressure. Side effect six is eating broccoli during pregnancy and nursing period. Apparently this is because the fibre in it can cause gas and other digestive problems. But surely this is just a repeat of side effect too, and is a problem for anyone, not just pregnant women. I'm now kind of wishing I hadn't bothered to include this website. There are five references, but none of them are reputable science sites, and one is Wikipedia. OK, let's look at one final website. Good old WebMD. They have just one thing that they say it's possibly effective for, and that's high cholesterol. They then list some things that there's not enough evidence for. Bladder cancer, breast cancer, cancer of the colon and rectum, fibromyalgia, prostate cancer, and stomach cancer. In terms of side effects or safety, they say, Broccoli is likely safe in the small amounts found in a normal diet. There is not enough information to know if broccoli is safe when taken in larger medicinal amounts. Now, in terms of references, as always, there are loads and loads and loads of references, but no web links, so you can't easily check them out. OK, so what can we conclude from all this information? It seems that broccoli is worth including in your diet, as it is nutritious and does have some possible health benefits. But you shouldn't go crazy and overdose on loads of broccoli. But then, why would you? Oh, and be careful if you're on blood thinning medication. In terms of the best way to consume broccoli, should you cook it or eat it raw? And if you do cook it, how should you cook it? Well, the best way is actually to have it in powdered form as part of a powdered juice blend featuring a mixture of vegetables. There is actually a powdered green juice product I drink myself and highly recommend, so click the link in the description to take a look at that. Until next time, I wish you the very best of health.